There's very few other communities out there that can say that. Most of the wait times are between five and five days to two weeks. Um, so we're very lucky that way. We have great access to physician services. And our wait times that they won't say that they want to reduce, we're already the best in the province. I can tell you that, and our numbers can show that we're we've been measuring this for the past seven years since we joined the primary care network. Also, our time to third next is one of the lowest in the province. That means at what length of time does the third next appointment take to get into a CF position? It's a complicated formula, but that's the way the government's decided to measure how good we are at access. And, and, and we just happen to be very, very good. We basically see everybody who wants to be seen that day. If they book in the morning, they can usually get in that same day. And if they book in the afternoon, sometimes they need to get in in the afternoon, but for sure into the next morning. That's called same day access. That's what the province wants to achieve. That's what we've had for the last 18 years where I've been when I've been in the clinic. So advanced access really is not an issue with in Kirsten. Right now, if you were to ask my doctors, we don't have an access problem. We have an excess supply problem right now. We have eight physicians where you know, a few years ago we just had five. And we, we haven't grown. We're not seeing any more patients at the clinic than we did five years ago. So that's just the first point on this document that I addressed that is very misrepresented as far as we're concerned. And not a lot of thought has gone into this, these numbers that are presented. Um, I could go on. What else do you want me to talk about in this document? From maybe um, to help us get the perspective of the clinic and the physician, would it be possible for you to kind of write a document that outlines the disagreement that you have with that document and send it to us so that we can take a different perspective on it, which is a political voice yeah. to address those issues. Would that be possible? I'm sure that would be possible. You bet. Because I question the numbers because I had heard that numbers didn't seem to be quite right. And it appears that from what we were told that someone had kind of took the numbers after speaking with people at the clinic. So I don't really know how everything kind of unfolded. Yeah. All I know is that's what I heard, but we need to hear the perspective of the phys physicians in our town and of the clinic as a business model, because that is something we must keep in our mind. It's a business model, a business, and you yeah. ought to operate it as such, not only just as a care provider with access from A to A, but as something that's viable and sustainable for the physicians in town. Well, we can certainly do that, and uh, you know, it would take <laughs> reams of paper to address all the issues that we're experiencing in healthcare right now in the province, because there's it's a complex problem that the province has, and I, I, I feel for them, and, and it's a tough one to tackle. We have this unsustainable system right now. Mm -hmm. That's have we have a right. uh, Ron, it seems like the government is addressing all clinics in the same manner. This regionalization thought, they look at Edmonton, they look at Calgary, and they say, hey, all the clinics are operated like that. I've lived in this community for 64 years, and in the 55 years that I've been going to that clinic by myself, I've never been uh, waited longer than maybe 10, 15 minutes. So we have excellent services. Now, are they talking about expanding the clinic and bringing more doctors in? Are they talking about the uh, uh, long-term care at the hospital, expanding that? What are they talking about? 
I don't know. When we talk about know. primary <laughs> care, our doctors are on it. But I, I'm just, what concerns me more than, more than that is I sit on the EMS committee along with Councillor Barnes and we see all these transfers into Lethbridge. When our hospital is equipped to handle a lot of that stuff and yet we're not using it. I was just talking to Dr. Clark today, and you know, one of the things we have to worry about here is we don't want to have happen to us what happened in Coldale. Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Where why they, they agreed to expand their services, they agreed to open up longer hours, and so they did reduce uh, hospital usage and they lost it. Yeah. And that's a concern. You never know, quite know, where they're coming from in these types of initiatives. I hate to say that about. <laughs> situation that's my feeling if you were to accept more emergency type visits would that lower your patient per hour rate like if you had to deal with a lot of uh, cuts bruises putting in stitches assessing broken bones things like that well um, if we if we expanded our service you mean if we mm -hmm. expanded our hours I'm not sure it would or not. I, 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 yeah, we could probably see more patients. I mean, there is a certain amount of patients that go up to the hospital uh, who seek treatment for non-acute things mm -hmm. between the hours of 5 and 8 p.m. There is a certain that don't quite make it into the clinic in time, and so they go to the hospital. It's, no. it's a walk-in clinic, basically. And yeah, it's not the best way. Now, one of the plans in here is to, you know, co-location of a hospital and a clinic. That is the future of, of health care as far as our government is concerned. And I wouldn't disagree with that. That's part of a good plan. I mean, I, I, uh, clinics that are doing that right now, Tabor, Pincher Creek, they, it's a really good way of operation. And I could probably sell extended hours to my physicians if we didn't have to open up a building and bring in more staff. And then it becomes viable financially for them. And so co-location, one of their, the second priority here, the, the building, the new hospital, has to come first. Before right. Before. One thing they found in Calgary with these walk-in clinics is uh, the staff know all the people on a first name basis. They're there that often because they come in for hangnails, a split toenail, and it's ridiculous which all increases the, the cost and cuts down your efficiency. So I don't think walk-in clinics are doing any good for the amount of money they cost to operate. You know, the root problem here goes further down where, you mm -hmm. know, we have a system where, where everything's free. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so it's obviously going to be abused when everything's free. Yeah, I think if they charge $5 every time you went in, for ten dollars, people would be a little more reluctant to, to go in. Help immensely, sure. Yeah. But you know, as far as the overall plan, the picture of what they're trying to do, I wouldn't disagree with. I mean, they've got a lot of good ideas in here, and some of it we would wholeheartedly get on board with. You know, the, the, the uh, obviously the new, new facility, the new hospital with the clinic located. Mm -hmm. That's something that we've been fighting for for a long time. Uh, the detox center, this is one area where the physicians are really at a loss as to where to send the patients that need detox and need addiction counseling. We just don't have it here in the community like we need it. We apparently have an addictions counselor now at the mental health facility, but, but we need a lot much more. The drug, community drug prohibition, a lot of these ideas are good, you know? And you, and we would jump on board with them
program in our clinic. Just started today. We've been working on it for the past six months. Met Calvary Health Services worked with us and sent down people to help us design the program. Mm -hmm. so, so a lot of these things that they're talking about, we're already doing. We at the Carson Clinic was one of the first what, three clinics in San Alberta to join the primary care network along with Pension Creek and Taylor. And one of the first in the province actually. And that we've been doing this for since 2005. And so we have good experience with primary care and the initiative. And we've been doing all we can to support that initiative and doing what we can in the clinic to do all the types of chronic disease management that they want and do the preventative medicine that they want us to do so that we can curb hospital usage. And, and they recognize that at the meeting, I must say. They were quite vocal about all the good that the clinic is doing and spearheading as yeah, program. They mentioned their lifestyle program. Mm -hmm. We have dietitians, we have uh, uh, diabetes educators. So we're doing a lot, only be, and mainly because we're, we've been involved with primary care for seven years now. Which, when I say primary care, I mean the initiative that the province started and helps fund us to do it. I mean, they're basically paying for some of our nurses that, to do this education. Mm -hmm. As it had its bureaucratic nightmares a little bit sometimes, but uh, we do it. Um, so yeah, uh, a lot of this is, is good. The uh, chronic disease management, you know, like I said, we we can get on board with that. We'll, you know, we're already trying to do the best we can with the resources that we've got. Um, funding seems to be the issue with every priority, <laughs> and so there's not a lot you can do with so many resources. We uh, we have a thousand diabetics in our patient population out of 12,000 pounds. And so we could be educating on diabetes until some comes home. You know, I just, it just, it's endless what we can do, or the work we, we can generate if we wanted to. But uh, you can only do so much. A lot of it has to come down to what can we do as a community to help people become more self-motivated to take care of their own health. So what is my personal opinion, I can't speak for the doctors, but I think the provincial objectives are like trying to plug a hole in a dam with a finger, you know, and it just will not happen with the methodology that they're using and the initiatives that they're using. Uh, telehealth, I'm not sure, you know, it's not a huge thing, but uh, I'm sure some people could benefit from that. Chronic disease management, all these things are really good, you know, but uh, it would have been nice, I guess, it would have been nice if, if we could have been at the table a little bit more. So, okay, this is what we are doing, what do you want us to do? If it's not enough, tell us, you know, because we're just doing what the primary care initiative is telling us to do. And believe me, they tell us what to do. <laughs> <laughs> they, you know, they, they control the first, the first strings and they, they fund us and as a result we have to account for that funding and every other week I have a facilitator in my clinic meeting with us to make sure that we're doing the things that they want us to do. They've taken control of clinics in, in a lot of ways, which is scary. You know, when I asked why the doctors were not at the table, uh, we were told you guys are way too busy to take time off <laughs> no day. Yeah. So I asked, are you going to liaise with them and get their point of view also? So I say yes, that's in the plan. And um, I'll be curious to know if it does happen. Yeah. Well, my understanding is, is that uh, this is open for comment until sometime in March. Yeah, I think till the end of, uh, was it the end of March? Yeah. End of March. And, uh, yeah. 
Do, do you or the doctors have uh, an intention of making a formal uh, comment towards this? We've never even been formally given this by all of them. That's a crazy answer. I snuck it over. There. <laughs> Thank well, you. This, okay. is, this is why I uh, asked mm -hmm. specifically if you were going to be debriefed on a way that debriefed us. And I sure showed us a word, didn't they, Maria? Mm -hmm. Correct. And maybe that'll happen. Well, I hope it will <laughs> happen. And uh, I'll be glad to send a little note to Grant Walker. If asking I, him. Mr. Chairman, I apologize for interrupting here. I think the appropriate course of action, the mayor has asked for a submission um, to council from the physicians in our community. And I think it would be appropriate for council to take that input and submit a formal yeah. um, comment to the appropriate authorities on this document because we were invited to the table. Mm -hmm. So I think it's appropriate that we make Please sure that we address that formally. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. My concern is with this plan, if you look back uh, 20 or 30 years ago, the uh, solution to medical problems was to put a hospital in every little hamlet around the province. After five years, they found out they weren't working. And uh, if they put this into everywhere, it's going to be a, an even bigger disaster than what we had with the last great idea that they had. My concern, and this is outside of the medical field, this is just my concern as a taxpayer, is Yes, we have an unsustainable system now, but from what I see and what I see from the initiatives that are coming forward in the family, the family clear clinic, the family, family care clinics, and all the initiatives that, that they're planning on, heaven help us uh, as taxpayers, we're already spending, what, 50 cents of every dollar in health care in the province? I'm not sure if that's correct, but it's 40 or 50 percent. This just to give you an idea, the her, uh, the, the Alison Redford's government wanted to implement 140 family care clinics. And I don't know if you know about those family care clinics or not, but they're a, a model of care that she designed without physician input again. And, and, and uh, they are one-stop shopping, all in one roof, uh, all under one roof, mental health therapists, physiotherapists, uh, optometrists, uh, physicians, uh, Really good. Sounds good in theory. They're all paid salaries. They're all government workers. They're all... Um, well, to give you an idea, I just heard a report of, uh, when I was at a conference last month from one of these family... There's three in the province right now under trial. We take care of about 12,000, 13,000 patients in our, in our clinic. We do that with roughly 10 or 12. We can do it with 10 or 12 staff. This family care clinic that reported, they, they have about 18,000 patients in their clinic, and they had 52 staff. Now, costs do not seem to be an issue with this government when it comes to health care. Costs are never brought to the table <laughs> on any discussion that I've seen. And uh, it just scares me to death as a taxpayer. Thank you for that. Any other questions the council has? Thanks for taking the time, Matt. Appreciate it. Maybe just in terms of a timeline, how much time do you think you need to kind of come up with something, a document? Um, I'm just looking at it so that we can have the response before the old deadline. Sure. I'd like to give the doctors, because they haven't even read this yet, and I'd right. like them to have time to look at it. I'd like to get their input on it first before I write anything. But the next five weeks, maybe? Yeah. Something like that. Month, five weeks? I certainly have something for you. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. I just realized that as I was uh, going through the agenda, I quickly skipped over the adoption of uh, the last minutes. Okay, good. <laughs> exactly what I was thinking. Uh, ever had a chance to review the minutes from uh, January 7th? Yeah. 
Any business arising from those minutes? Okay. New business, uh, point A, this would be 7A on your... <coughs> this is in regards to uh, finance and administration uh, policy regarding professional development fund for counselor's policy. Yes. I would say that uh, I would recommend that we accept this policy <coughs> to be brought to council for approval. Do we need a motion for that? I think that was, that was your motion. Yeah. Okay. Any further discussion on the motion? No. Okay. Just, just the a motion of uh, recommendation. A note that, and I know we're all aware of it, but although the the timelines changed, the budget for the town didn't change a bit. So that's right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. All in favor? Okay. Thanks. Uh, bylaw uh, policy B5 regarding bicycles lost or stolen and uh, backyard security and backyard hands. Let's deal with policy B5 first. Uh, basically, just an update of the current policy. This is a new one. This, oh, this, sure, is, a this, this is a new policy, Mr. Okay. Chairman. Do you want me to speak to it? Would you please? Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, this is a new policy that's being presented. Um, Lloyd has been asked to deal with lost and stolen bikes on behalf of the RCMP to take a little bit of the burden off of their response to those kind of calls. And so with that being proposed, um, I felt that it was important that we had a policy in place as to how we were going to deal with those bicycles, how are we going to record them, and then how are we going to dispose of those that aren't, uh, uh, that aren't claimed. Now, uh, you can see from the policy, there's, there's quite a few steps that we go through, including um, anyone who believes their bicycle has been stolen, that that file be submitted through the RCMP um, so that there's proper record of that. Um, the biggest thing in here, I guess, is that we would hold those bicycles for a minimum of 45 days, and if those are unclaimed at that time, uh, we will try to advertise the best we can that we found a, a bicycle or we have a bicycle in our uh, possession in case someone is missing it. Um, after the 45 day period has expired though, we would donate those bicycles to the Carson and District Handicap Association for them to dispose of and keep the, the sale or the proceeds of the sale. So in a nutshell, that's the policy. Mm -hmm. So, first question, how bad is the burden of storing these bicycles? Like, do we get a huge accumulation and we have to just find a place for them? Or? We have had, and that's one of the concerns that we have, is where do we store them in a safe, secure location? Um, we've been able to manage that. Um, I won't tell you where they're secured at this point. Um, <laughs> don't want any temptation. But we have, we have managed to... Um, to take care of that. But we've had a substantial, obviously depends on the time of year, but uh, when Lloyd first took this over on their behalf, we had a substantial number that become a little bit difficult to find the appropriate storage space for. So a follow-up question to that would be, uh, you know, and I'm just thinking myself, I know I can go 45 days without going out to my shed to notice whether or not my bike's been stolen. <laughs> so if during that whole time it's been gone and it's now donated and someone purchased it, I see it going down the road by a legitimate buyer, I'm going to feel a little sheepish. So I'm wondering how, how bad would the burden be on our storing of these bikes to extend this to 90 days? Because I think I would have tabs on my bike every 90 days, but maybe not so much 45. It's no, just a thought. Sir. It's no, just a thought. Yeah. Mm -hmm. As such to that, Marion, have we checked with legal? Is 45 days long enough for us to store them? Yeah, we've, we've looked into all of the ramifications of this. My, my initial um, reaction was uh, this is 
this is an RCMP issue and it puts us in a bit of a difficult position, but um, we made sure that the policy identified that if there's any indication that it's lost or stolen, uh, or that it's stolen, sorry, that the RCMP are notified. Um, so they have record of all of these and most people that's who they would report to, right, is, is the RCMP if they deem that they have a bicycle that is lost and deemed misappropriated. That's okay. Yeah, just a question. Over the years, I mean, we've, we've found bicycles at times and turned them into the RCMP. I'm just wondering if this policy is reflecting that the town has assumed a greater role in the in the collection and, and uh, uh, managing of the bicycle lot. That assumption would be correct. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. okay. And it, it really is because uh, we were approached by the RCMP to see if Lloyd could assist them in this because, um, you know, they felt that there was, um, we talked about this earlier with the, the lack of staffing um, here and the difficulty that they're having keeping up on all the things that they deem to be priority, that this was an area where we could potentially help them a little bit. Any other questions? One final kind of, do you think 90 days would be? Uh, we can manage whatever time limit you feel is appropriate. Um, it just mean, might mean that we have a few more bikes in storage over that period of time. But we. Put a chocolate bar out there. That's what you ask for. If council feels that 90 days is more appropriate, like I said, we do try to get information out to the public the best we can that we have found a people and, and if it's, please check your, your um, storage. <laughs> I, I, I would go for 60 days, but 90 days, Bill, is just a little bit too long. Can you tell me once? Uh, I'm just wondering who you really want to take over the RCMP responsibility for looking at these bikes. Is it their responsibility? Yeah. And, make, and, and, and they, have. Part of the question <laughs> is, it's not our fault that they're short-staffed. That's, that's an inherent problem within the detachment with the RCMP. And maybe they need to be reminded that you know, because they've got a problem that they're trying to download their problems onto the town, it's going to cost us some money, and we're already paying them to do that job. Mm -hmm. So I don't know whether we're being premature to but to take this on or not. I would agree with a lot of your statements. Um, that was a conversation that I had with Lloyd and with uh, in regards to this when the initial request came was. Um, where I felt more comfortable was that they would continue to keep the files. So really our, our responsibility was just the collection and storage. I don't have a problem which, with that part. Which, that's what this policy outlines, yeah. Yeah. Okay, I'm a little more comfortable with that because I don't want us to get into a paper chase. <laughs> right, exactly. You know? Exactly. That cost and they do us need to be RCMP to files do. because otherwise they can't be. Uh, well, they should be RCMP files. Let me just. Right. Okay. Yeah. Man, yeah. if I understand probably to address what uh, Councillor Brown is talking about, Lloyd finds a bag, puts it on the back of his truck, bring it to the storage, he identify the bag, mm -hmm. sends the specs to the RCMP. Mm -hmm. And that's about the extent of the paperwork. Correct. And then... Advertises um, it on town social we, media. Yeah, we advertise yeah. on social media or whatever. Um, I'm guessing we don't do the specifics. The to dispose no. of it. So yes, we don't take pictures of it. It, it, it <laughs> does <laughs> increase <laughs> his workload in some ways. Um, but to be honest with you, over the years, he is getting a lot of those calls saying, Lloyd, we got a call. Can you go pick up this bike for us? Like. And we assist in numerous ways, you know, he assists with traffic control or any of those kind of things when mm -hmm. the RCMP call. So I just wanted to formalize our responsibilities and the RCMP's responsibilities by way of policy so that there was no question, I guess, as to who was responsible for that. Okay. Mm -hmm. well, that's great. Okay. Uh, well, maybe, maybe I'll have a 
something else, but uh, I thought, well, I'll, I'll uh, make, make a motion that we recommend this to council with, with the change that we uh, increase the storage to 60 days. I think that I think 60 days would be reasonable. Yeah, I think so too. Any, any further discussion? Well, I, I just have one quick question while we're on the subject, and that is, do, do we have, maybe we, we could ask the RCMP to give a report just by way of uh, notifying the public as to what maybe the most <coughs> commonly stolen bikes are, are they kids' bikes, are they dirt bikes, are they street bikes, and then people will know, hey, if you have a bike that, bike that fits this kind of description, keep it maybe locked up, or just know that I, that's the one that... I would suggest that the RCMP would say you should keep all of your bikes locked up. Yeah, I don't know that they, that they would... <laughs> they've tried an education program about a lot of things, you know, about keeping your vehicles locked and keeping your belongings locked up. And I would say that more often than not, and, and I shouldn't speak on their behalf, but probably what is happening here is it is a, um, a crime of, of opportunity, uh, opportunity, opportunity where yeah. it's laying on the front yard because the kid came in for supper and nobody bothered to put it away. Just so. a quick comment. When my kids were growing up, my son had his bike stolen. We got a kid downtown that stole it and quickly relinquished the bike, but that was a rare case. But at the same time, we mentioned it to the RCMP, and he said that he had gone to a, a, a suspect's home checking on the bike because he thought that, that maybe somebody else's bike was at there. They found over 20 bikes at that one person's house, and of course, the grandpa didn't realize where all those bikes come from. Uh, that's kind of why. <laughs> but, you know, that's the thing. They're, they're, they are crimes of opportunity, and oftentimes these kids just see that, and they don't think nothing. They, I don't want that bike, too. But take them all. The ones that bad. wouldn't be crimes of opportunity would be immediately reported to the RCMP because, it, you know, it would be a break and enter or whatever, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, so most of the ones that we would collect, somebody will call and say, you know, I have a bike on my front lawn and it's been here for four days and I don't know who it belongs to. So we go pick it up. It's not even necessarily someone reporting that they've lost it right at the Okay, so we have a motion. All in favor? Okay. So make that recommendation to council. 60 days, eh? 60 days, yeah. Yeah, that's those 60 days. Forget it, Bill. You're have to look every 40 days. We're at 60 days now. <laughs> Save you some extra work. There you go. Okay, uh, the food security uh, chicken issue here. So, Councilor Creed, did you want to? Sure, I, uh, I uh, made the request uh, for this. Uh, as I indicated, this was this was discussed with the, with the last council in, in food security. And, uh, I thought at the time, I thought, you know, we're, 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 we're rural people, we should get this. What I've discovered since is that it's because we're rural people, we don't get this because in many cities, uh, people are saying, yeah, food security, this, this, people have had hands, in, and with respect to Councillor Bangry's comments uh, on, on his uh, letter, that reflects exactly the rural attitude that we have as a people picture a barnyard and all of the things that goes along with it where backyard hens is, is, is much far removed from that. It's uh, very responsible. We're not talking about a full coop of hens. We're talking about maybe a half a dozen, you know, at the most. And uh, I've got some articles here from uh, San Diego and uh, um, my, where my daughter lives in uh, <laughs> Escondido. <laughs> And uh, they, uh, oh, about a year ago, they embraced uh, having uh, backyard hens quite, quite enthusiastically. And uh, there were many presenters showing the benefits of it. And uh, um, many cities throughout the United States, I think Utah, um, most of the cities in, in Utah always have allowed hens. Uh, the idea that, you know, that, that chickens are farm animals, uh, Somehow we got that from the suburban idea of, of uh, well, we can buy everything from the store now and we don't have to do it. But in, in cities in Europe, uh, many places, it's always been the case that people have uh, 
have had uh, and yeah, I, I, I put a letter on there and people maybe haven't had a chance to read it uh, of advantages that it, that it could be uh, and uh, we're not advocating roosters at all <laughs> uh, we're, we're just that you know so I, there's there's not a noise we don't have a noise issue and uh, many of the other uh, arguments I guess are you know cons I would say are speculative um, you know, until you actually you actually try it, you don't know. You don't know if you're going to have a, a problem. Um, I would suspect that you won't. I've got, like I say, I'm, I'm a little jealous. I've got daughters in Utah, in uh, West Bountiful, and daughter in Escondido, and they're they're both uh, enjoying their uh, their backyard hens. It's, it's great. The kids are enjoying it. When I do uh, Skype with my daughter in Escondido, the kids will be carrying in a hen and showing us their little chickens, <laughs> enjoying it. But uh, uh, anyway, uh, and, and I'm not totally representing this for myself. In, when it was brought up before, there were numerous uh, people in the community that were interested. Um, I'll have to just say that they, they're basically invisible. I mean, you know, they'll, you, you can put six hens in, the, in, a, in a garden shed, <laughs> and nobody will know that they're there. <laughs> uh, you know, they're, they're quiet, they're easy. So anyway, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm willing to debate it. <laughs> uh, I'm not, you know, so uh, I'm, I'm willing to, you know, accept what other people, but I've, it's been on my mind for about two and a half years, so I'm loaded with arguments. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Mayor Cronin. Mr. Chairman, I understand Councillor Tweed's desire to revisit our pets uh, policy to include chickens, hens. The background that we received represents two elements of, the, of discussion. First, the exclusion of chicken as pets from our present policy, which is presented as discriminatory. Secondly, hands as a sustainable local source of food, a practice accepted in many urban areas in North America and other parts of the world. Here we are just not talking about pets like cats, dogs, and rabbits. We are talking about pets as a source of food, a little bit different. The keeping of hands would come under the broad umbrella of local food production, which was identified as a priority at the time of our strategic planning session. So from a governance point of view, and because we are presently working on our strategic planning, and fleshing out our priorities, one that will address local food production. I would recommend to Council that we table this discussion for a later Council. As you know, today we will be reviewing our priorities. This will influence our policies. Some existing policies may need to be revisited. Some others may need to be elaborated. Let us proceed in order, from strategies to specific goals to action plans that would include appropriate policies to achieve our goal. Therefore, I seek approval from Council to table this item, not discard it, but table it, and discuss it as part of our local food production priority item. Okay, so we have a motion on the table to table. Mm -hmm. What's uh, any discussion on that? Well, so just a few oh, Mr. Chairman, uh, this has been brought up before. Uh, how many times before? Pardon? How many times has this been brought up before? Well, only once since I've been on council. It was brought up uh, 2011. <laughs> uh, you know, year, years ago it was never an issue. I don't know which council uh, effectively decided to ban it, but. Uh, you know, it's, it's time to revisit it. It's 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 uh, very popular, like I say, in in many places. Uh, it hasn't been an issue, so uh, I think it's time that we we look at it. As as Mayor Cronin said, as far as part of our uh, our strategy for for food security in the community, and uh, I'm I'm happy with their uh, idea to, to table this and then discuss it as part of our as part of our, of our strategic planning. Um, as as as. All the councilors are aware. I submitted a 
cons against mm -hmm. backyard chickens. Uh, I'm very, uh, I'm very dedicated to this, and there's several reasons. Uh, in my, uh, in my campaigning, I heard chickens for backyards, but I heard more chickens against backyards. Um, we're here to deal with the majority of the, of the citizens of Cardston. And if we, if we do a, a motion to have chickens in the backyard, and Richard Pingree is against it, and his neighbor has chickens in the backyard, is this council pitting neighbors against neighbors? Are they creating animosity in our community? Those are some of the ideas we have to worry about. Another thing is one of my points talk about diseases in, in chickens and ducks and fowl. And uh, in, in the summation of my, of my cons, I said, let us be very wise and exercise caution in going forward with the issue of allowing chickens in the backyards of town residential yards. I feel that we need to promote farmers markets where these types of food products are raised and grown by county farms and industry who are aware of all of the problems and dangers and have the ability and knowledge to maintain a safe and marketable product. That's a very serious statement. Councilor Vengri, if I might, I don't necessarily disagree with what, what right. you're saying. Um, the motion that we want to discuss here right now is whether or not we're going to get into the depth of that discussion at a later date. Well, I'm just, I'm just wondering if we just put it off and put it off and put it off and we don't come to a, to a head. Well, I don't know that that's the case given that in our, our strategic planning session we did identify that this was an area that we wanted to discuss and to work out with as part of our priorities. Um, my concern actually follows closely with Councillor Cronin's in that uh, or maybe sorry, here comes. I got the chair, but should right now. <laughs> um, in, in that, in going into it now, maybe we're getting ahead of ourselves as far as what our planning is, and making sure that we're putting our plan in place the way we want it. Uh, was there any other discussion anybody had regarding tabling? Well, yeah, I, so my only question on the tabling was uh, do we have a projected date as to when, for instance, the public who might be asking about this issue, when we can say, hey, we're going to be discussing this in March, hey, we're going to be discussing this in April. So, so after our meeting today, we have our, some more priority planning. Right. So until we have that initial stage done, I don't think we have a date. Right. Yeah. But it would be in the, as, as part of that priority package. Yeah. Uh, I agree. I think that's... And, and I'm sure when it gets to that point of when it's an actual discussion, I'm sure there will be lots of advertising about it. And the public will, will be aware that it's on, on the agenda. I, if you may, uh, Mr. Chairman, I have submitted 16 questions to our local vets that I will be uh, glad to <coughs> respond to and uh, to give us a little direction. bit more direction. And I think we cannot ignore the professional advice either. Sure. It should be part of the discussion. Okay. So on, on that basis, did anybody else have anything else that they wanted to, to comment on that or can we call for I, I was just going to say here, my understanding is it's not going to, not every property is going to qualify for chickens anyways. You're going to have to have certain or parameters want, or want them or want them at all. <laughs> again, that you know, that would depend upon what yeah. we decided as a council yeah. to put into there. And so, no, I, again, I, I, I want to take it back to yeah. that's the details that we'll be working out through our priority. Yeah. Uh, so, I, I'd like to call the question on on the motion that we have to table it. All in favor? Okay. okay. All right. 7C. Uh, so we received a, uh, a letter from one of our citizens asking us to uh, discuss 
specifically the uh, fluoride. Has everybody had an opportunity to review? Mm -hmm. Yes. I would, uh, uh, looking at what uh, uh, Justin Scott wrote, I think it was very well written and addressed many different elements of the dis dis discussion or investigation that should take place regarding this item. It came to council in the past and never found uh, traction. But I really believe that um, I would like to see, to make a motion to recommend further investigation in the matter and to have a public consultation regarding this, this item. I'd like to make that motion myself. Further to that motion, I'd, I'd like to have our, uh, our water treatment uh, supervisor involved in that discussion so that we know what's happening with our water and how much fluoride is putting it in and so forth. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's a good idea. So the uh, motion is to uh, it's a motion of rec to recommendation that we further investigate this yep. then? Mm -hmm. Well, if, if I may, just uh, would it be wise to have, have that next month? I mean, I'm just trying to, you know, could, uh, could the administration maybe give us a sense of when how we should uh, uh, operate with a recommendation for further investigation? Should it be handled first in Committee of the Whole? Sure. I think that what we could do is um, we would invite individuals with some expertise to the next Committee of the Whole meeting. Now, uh, whether that can happen or not, it'll depend on their availability, but I think by our committee of the whole meeting in March would be the appropriate time to start those discussions. It, it is an item if you're looking at um, some debate and some investigation into all sides of the issue that it's best dealt with at the committee level. Mm -hmm. um, and then perhaps council may deem that they want to go to some additional public uh, forums to have some of that discussion as well. Council Thank Creek. you. Uh, you the, the, the writer of the letter indicates that there is a person who is an expert in this and says he would be available in April. Um, I would suggest we could do that in, in April. In our, would that, would that wouldn't be we putting it at our, at our CCW meeting in April? In, in April, April rather than and, March. Then, and then maybe advertise it well and, and have people from both sides make presentations. Yeah, it, it may be because it'll be, you know, there could be some fairly comprehensive um, presentations and questions on behalf of council. So this may be a number of community meetings that yeah. we'll have to have representives there to to present all sides of it, right? So, 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 so with it that, should we leave it in administration's yeah. hands to be able to put that into our, right. onto our, our agenda? Right. Okay. I was going to say, there, she says also in her letter, it's not necessary to have to wait that long. I mean, there are, there's, there's another three, doctor, yeah. there's three people, but two of them are available mm -hmm. anytime. Right. Yeah. I really there. believe that in March we could start the process yeah. and carry it on with the experts as they are available. Uh, for us so that we can make a wise decision. So why don't we, uh, with that motion then, uh, make the recommendation to Council uh, and leave it in administration's hands as far as the schedule and when experts can come to, to schedule that for, to be a Can we good? put a time frame when we can deal with this and, and end it? Like if we start the discussion in April or March, I'd like to see it ended by July or August or something like that and just say the policy is going to come out such and such after we've had these public meetings. I, I don't know that we or can. Or we'll just keep on bailing it forward. And I, no, I, 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 well, I, I, I agree with you that it would be nice to get whatever decision made made, but I don't know that we can put a, a timeline on that this has to be dealt with by this date. Well, or that it is. Three or that it's the last advance. one. Because, uh, <laughs> three months in advance, we should so, be able to have. So we have, we have a motion on the table uh, to make that recommendation to Council and leave it into administration's hands of when to uh, schedule it for us. In favor? Thank you. All right. Uh, yeah. Sir, yeah. Just, uh, a suggestion that, that uh, at the end of our uh, 
agenda, there's a correspondence, and it, it deals with the same thing. So I would just recommend that, that we include that uh, correspondence item as, as being dealt with, uh, since it was on the same subject. I, I would be fine with that. Okay. Parks and Recreation. This was the cleanup. Right. Okay. So, would you like to address that for <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm a little behind you here. Sorry, Mary, I thought you were talking to me when you said that. <laughs> Somebody said parks and recreation. I don't know, that's not me. <laughs> but uh, no, this, in, in the Communities in Bloom uh, uh, committee meeting, we, we talked about a, a community cleanup, which we discussed briefly at the, at the last council meeting, but then we suggested that we we bring it up to to discuss it further so this is the this is the, time. the further the further discussion this is the further discussion that we we have on, on the cleanup um, and I think um, the the communities in bloom would, would I will, I will uh, be bold enough to say that we, we would help organize uh, you know, the involvement you know community involvement in that cleanup we would just need the, the support of the town uh, crews and uh, and and I guess uh, discussing a, a date, if we was to do that, that, that it would be possibly when we already kind of do a, have a town cleanup week, and that we could just enhance that with uh, you know some volunteer uh, community cleanup efforts at, at the same time. So if uh, council is in favor of that idea, I will make that recommendation. <laughs> Anybody else have anything else they wanted to continue? Well, I just Here. wanted to add, uh, Councillor Lee, it seemed to me that uh, the committee had tasked uh, okay. Randy Russell to try to determine areas where, yes. where we could work. TLC was needed in town. Yeah. And he was going to do that for us. And then from there on, we were going to decide how to proceed. Uh, one thought, and maybe it's already part of the plan, but I'm wondering if we couldn't have a little task force addressing any graffiti on that day as well, so we yeah, can go around it, it, a little... It's, it's all part of the broader picture. Mm -hmm. yeah. although, the, although the graffiti uh, recommendations is, is that you get on top of graffiti immediately, you don't, you don't wait you know, yeah, for some absolutely. future day. Yeah, no, that's I'm just thinking that anything that's still around on that day, that's the day we do our... Well, we, yeah. we could... You know, Get a start on it. Ask if there's volunteers. If, if we happen to have any, it the, needs to be taken care of. That's an idea. Yeah. Yeah. Just a caution on the graffiti. Um, if it is town owned property, That's what we have a policy and we've directed staff to get on it immediately. If it's on private property, uh, uh, you have to have permission before yeah. you send volunteers yeah. in. So it takes quite a bit of coordination, just as a, yeah. as a heads up. Yeah. <laughs> And, that, that's and, and we actually, surprisingly, it. have had some issues with private property. Right. Uh, people not wanting to actually have to deal with it. So. Exactly. Yeah, the reason I brought it up is because if we are going to tackle graffiti that day, it needs to be addressed before that day, getting the permissions, getting the color Absolutely. matching, and whatever we need to do. So. Council Member. Uh, community cleanup. Can you just enlighten us a little bit more, Councillor Creed, on what's expected there and what kind of properties are we going to be cleaning up? Are we going to be identifying certain individual properties and saying, hey, your property no, isn't no, up to snuff? No, no, is is not, this public property? It, yeah, public town, town owned property, as, as uh, Mayor Cronin indicated, uh, the communities in Blue Mask, Randy Russell, to try and identify some areas that, that could be uh, potential uh, areas where we could get volunteers uh, to uh, address on, the, on that day and make it a, make it a community. Uh, community effort like the creek like the creek or the lions park or main the street Sunset or Park. or yeah. the area you know, the top lot you know in, anywhere that, that, that maybe has has a need or there's a need that we could uh, bring people in try to build a little pride in our community so so communities in bloom would be heading this up and, and is that, that the i'm 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 going to put my neck out there and say, yeah, come here. Mayor Cronin, you had something you wanted to... Well, I also remember last year where there were some neighborhood kind of cleanup, which were organized by the church on the west side, and there was some that happened on the east side too. 
uh, in Sixth Ward. I think if we all coordinate our effort together, we might have within a day something that looks pretty pretty and pretty spring looking and inviting for the, the summer season, the tourist season. No, um, whenever they do the uh, Moses Lake cleanup, I, I know every ward is on board with people, and I'm sure if we did a community thing, that it'd be the same result. I'm sure that the bishopric would get out there and encourage the members to get involved, and we could have a very successful day or two doing it. I have a problem with them getting involved with graffiti removal. Graffiti removal is an expensive proposition. In Calgary, they decided that they would do it on a, on a city basis, and their budget is escalated every year. Right. So I think once you set a precedent of going around and cleaning it off and removing the responsibility from the property owner, you're going to create some problems for us. Well, I don't know that the idea was for us to use a material, no money from the town to do that. I think each business uh, would have to at least take care of uh, that aspect. But they should have done that already. <coughs> the plan is remove it immediately. <laughs> yeah, yes. well, that's good yeah, you know, the there are many no points example. regarding that, and uh, yeah, I'm it, not, it I, has to be discussed. I, I, I agree with you that that could become a very expensive yeah. thing, if, especially never, if the town yeah. would pay for it. I don't it think there's any proposal here for the to town that. to be... No. Our budget is very limited in yes. public interest. In some cases it means uh, renting sandblasters to yes. clean no. up bricks yeah. and things like that. And I don't think that's part of a cleanup. Yeah, no. Cleanup is cleanup. Mm -hmm. That's not what we intended. Councilor Pimo, you had something you wanted to add there? Uh, well, I was just going to ask about the specifics of previous uh, cleanups. Uh, have we had the ecclesiastical collaboration? Have we? Okay. Uh, go, go ahead. ahead. <laughs> <laughs> it's your turn. Okay. No. Uh, it, it can happen. I, I, my, my, thoughts, uh, my thoughts are that in, in some of the things from our from our community survey, uh, there was, were several people that suggested that uh, we need to have things that are town sponsored, not church sponsored, and uh, we can we can invite all of the churches, you know, participate. They are they are part of the groups in, in town, yeah. but but it, we, we should not try to make it a, a church, you know, sponsored or or a, a church. Event. I think it needs to be a, a community event, event that would uh, be for the whole community. Councilor people to answer your uh, question directly, there never was, per se, in the past three years that I have been in council, a town cleanup uh, directed from a town committee. We done that for Moses Lake cleanup, but we never done it for our town. So the focus is shifting a little, doesn't mean that the other might not happen. It just means that this is a focus that we identified as an area of interest in the communities and in the, in the service we have. So do, sorry. Um, I just want to, to be clear, the town has not been the driving force behind the Moses Lake no. cleanup as well. We just simply right. participate um, with manpower and equipment. That has been actually uh, organized by the LDS Church. Um, but at that time, during the Moses Lake cleanup, we have had community cleanup organized by the church within the boundaries of the town as well, um, in particular the creek bed and the that mm -hmm. area, mm -hmm. on the same day. So mm -hmm. there has been some, but it hasn't been, as the mayor said, organized by the town. No. But one doesn't exclude the other. Do we need a motion for a recommendation? to cancel for this or? I, I, my understanding is that the communities in Bloom is going to spearhead this. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. I think it's just a matter of the councillor going back to the committee and saying, you know, I've got supportive council to move forward with this and then come back with more specifics and then have a formal motion. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Thank you. Uh, is, there a, is there a date that, that the town has, you know, that is our we have a cleanup week where, where, where the town will pick up, you know, additional 
items. You know what that yes. what the we date of that? We normally do that between mid to end of May. Um, um, we were just talking about we'll get a date set and we'll let you know what that date is. Um, mm -hmm. And don't allow any late snows on that day. Yeah, that, you know, it, it never fails. Whatever date yeah. we set it for, we'll be doing yeah. it the next week because it snows. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. But this year, so, one thing to keep in mind this year is with the pool project, our public works and our parks and recreation staff will be heavily engaged in finalizing that project. Right. So we're going to have to keep that in mind as well if we're talking about um, having the town staff or equipment mm -hmm. available for this cleanup. So it's something just to keep in mind. Yeah. Well, that's why I'm suggesting if, if it's during the week that we are already mm -hmm. doing that, um, it, it might be something that's already on their on their priority list. Or we, we may have to bump it a little later, though, to accommodate the pool project. Okay. We'll just have to, we'll talk with our staff and see what the best date is, and then we'll, we'll let you know, counselors. Okay. So, I, I think you can we'll go back and we'll get a bit of the council's support of it. Thank you. Appreciate okay. it. All right. Uh, I don't believe we have, unless there's something that was added afterwards, any confidential items? No. Nope. We need to go to the other. So, we are. We, oh, sorry. I almost, I almost missed you again, man. I have something to do. Okay. okay. Let's. Uh, um, on the front of you, you may have a letter to citizen. I had forwarded that earlier on to Councillor Balfour's a while back when he was writing his other report. <laughs> but it was so lengthy that we couldn't really incorporate the report uh, from the RCMP. Um, I really thought that it is an important piece of information that the public should know something about. Um, it deals with what we talked about. Uh, the offenses, it talked about the graffiti, it talked about uh, the, the really upcoming transfer of our corporal to Manitoba, leaving the detachment even shorter. And the need for us, uh, as a sideline, to meet with them, since we have an ad hoc committee that has been strong, to make sure that it's not gone before we do that. So. I really thought it could inform the public as to what the RCMP is doing and that they are aware of what's going on and really mindful of the safety and security of our town. So I just wanted to know if you felt it was a useful um, piece of information that should be published and could be published under Councillor Balfour's name. I don't <laughs> care. Makes no difference to me. It's just because there was so much on the agenda last time, it, the report couldn't be too page long. It was just too much. Councillor so. Mr. Chairman, the only thing I, I have against this letter bearer uh, is I'd like to strike uh, number three. Uh, that might not be for public information at this point in time. A lot of times people don't like that kind of information getting up. So I'd just like to strike it. I mean, if they're watching TV, they know it now and so forth, but I don't think that should be advertised in that letter. Okay. I would take it one step further. I would say, as lovely as this is, um, no, uh, you can it's, comment. Yeah, no, it's it just doesn't bother me. Just from my perspective, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> thinking, thinking as a, as a citizen, this is why I brought it forward. So that's, can it's just it. yeah, it's just a bit wordy. Uh, what I would love to see is you know, hey, the RCMP recommends the following, and then bullet, 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 done. That's just a just a thought. It's. Uh, I'm kind of a wordy person. I really like it the way it is. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, but I'd like to have, I, I agree you know, with Councillor Bang. We can strike a compromise somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> but I, 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 I have a concern that, that we're already short staff. And, and I don't think we need to let people out there know that it's even going to be more if, if it happens that quickly. But don't you think that would be then? A way to let the citizens know. Be careful. Maybe maybe it's a good time to advertise for more people to help with uh, citizens on patrol. <laughs> That'd be a good way to help out. 
We have hey, eight Mary, now. Did you have something you wanted to? No, I. Okay, but you just like you, you had that look, so I just wanted. But I, but I, <laughs> okay, well, <laughs> I did want to make one sort of comment. comment. I think that this would tag on to your letter very nicely, and I think we should put it on the website. Okay, so let's try to deal with number three. Can, can, can we just talk for a second here? And Councilor Evans has something to add in first. here. So. Informing the citizens that they're short staff is also informing all the criminals in the area that they're short staff. <laughs> and you and have this a good is a point. great time to break into your house. <laughs> you have a super good point. That, so that uh, you have a very good point. So let's take. Uh, I think we take. Out. I think we take your letter, critique it, in the areas that that Corporal Brown suggested that we need to put motion sensor lights up, lock mm -hmm. our doors. You know, okay. a bullet form like Councillor P. Roy said, and not not suggest we're short staffed, not suggest how okay. long we're going to be short staffed, and so forth. I like Councillor. Yeah, uh, you know, uh, you have a good point. It's mm -hmm. true. Maybe I'm a little naive. Oh, <laughs> so uh, perhaps maybe we could do with this letter what you and I did with my letter. <laughs> <laughs> you know something? We can have it. <laughs> I, I am fair game because that's a whole notion of improving a product, right? Absolutely. So why, why don't we uh, uh, also, start, start that would be yours. I am happy to abbreviate. Okay. You know something? <laughs> that would be your task, I, that. I, I'd be happy to do that. That's fine. Mm -hmm. Good. I'll send you the... Well, yeah. yeah. I, would, I can forward it. Could you forward it? I'll send it out to all of council. So yeah, so if we could get an email chain going with that, and then we'll just anybody that has anything to add on to it, then yeah. uh, time frame wise, what were we thinking? We wanted to get this published by sooner the better. Soon, next yeah, that's what I think. So mm -hmm. February what? Sure. So we we have a deadline of Tuesday if we wanted to get into next week's papers. So yeah, I, I would suggest you have a deadline of Friday if we want to get it into next right. week's this paper. This Friday, so you that I know. can have it in. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. 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 Great idea. Thank you. So Friday then. So when you get these emails, let's uh, respond quickly and and uh, we'll put that to best. Good. Well, okay. it, thank you. You're good. I have one uh, one uh, situation I need to um, make you aware of. On the 24th of February, I have a recreation a park recreation meeting at four o'clock here. And I also have a library board meeting at the same time, at 5 o'clock, which I can't make it to both. So I was just going to ask, since our mayor is the yeah, uh, ex, officio, ex officio member of every committee, okay. would you I like to attend one? It's the 24th, it's yeah. a Monday. My preference would for me to attend the library board because I'm more familiar there. And you, which is the other one? Is the Parks and Recreation. It'd be oh, at 4 o'clock sure. here. Sure. Is that just a one time thing? Or is no, that that just, no, no, it's just one time. Well, it's you just, don't have a green thing. It, usually we have our, our meeting is usually the week before, but it becomes it's family day, so they put it off. That's no, fine. it's fine. Uh, so you, I'll be there. So you go to the Parks and Recreation yeah. here at 4 o'clock on the 24th. Yeah, but send me send me the agenda, send yeah, me background or whatever well, so, you As soon have. as Tara gets it to me. I'll, I'll let the staff know and make sure that you're... Yeah, have Tara Thank just you. send one off to her, that would be great. Thank sure. you, Mary. All right. No problem. And uh, with that, I'm looking for... A we might have one uh, possibly. <laughs> yeah, and this is if Mary, before the meeting, you were you were checking on possible transportation of that uh, Brownlee seminar, and all of the councillors weren't here at that time. Do we want to talk about it now, or do you want to talk uh, about it, that? It after? can be after the meeting. It's fine. It doesn't need to be on record. No. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I'll, okay. I'll, I'll, okay. I'll make the motion. Thank you very much. We are adjourned. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> we have for those of you. So, um, the Thank you for uh, coming out. We're always happy we to see members from the community out.